Welcome to the flame test lab. In this lab, we are going to be putting a solution into the flame of a Bunsen burner to see what happens to the electrons on the ions in that solution, okay? In this lab, I'm going to be using a few pieces of equipment that we have not used yet. There it is. The first one is a splint. The splint is just basically a piece of wood. It's like a popsicle stick that I am going to use to soak it in my solution. So my solution will be in containers like this. I soak the splint in them so that the wood can absorb some of the solution with the ions in it. And then I can take my um, splint out and just put it into the flame. And we can see the different colors that the ions give off from the solution. Okay, the other piece of equipment that I don't think that you've ever heard of before, um, because it's not very common to use, is something called cobalt blue glass. In the lab, you might see it referred to just as glass, but it is this dark blue colored glass that's going to act as a color filter for our solutions, okay? There are some solutions where we will look with our naked eye. In fact, about 90% of them, we will just be looking with our naked eye. A couple of times we are going to put this over our eye, or in your case, I'm going to cover up the webcam or the actually camera on my phone with the glass as if it were up against your eye. What this glass does is it blocks all yellowish orange wavelengths from getting through. So you can kind of notice like my skin has some yellowish hue to it. Uh, the red in the American flag, my button, these cabinets over here. Now look what happens when I put the glass over the webcam. You no longer see those wavelengths. You can still see some like white colors. You can see um, the blues. You can see purples and pinks, but the yellow and orange wavelengths do not get through this glass. Okay, so we are going to use this to block out some wavelengths while seeing others in a part of the lab. Now, while I'm running the lab, which will come after this intro video, you should have the lab up on your screen. I would suggest you do a split screen so that you can have the data table that you should be filling out on one side and the video on the other. And then as I go through each of the different solutions in the flame, you can fill in the data table with the correct color of the flame that you see in the video. It's going to be a lot easier than play, watch, pause, Go find your data table, type it in, go back to the video, just have a split screen up so you can see the video and do the data table at the same time. A couple of things that I want to quickly review with you before we actually start the lab. Remember that if we have an atom, this big uh, dot here is going to be the nucleus and this little dot here will be our electron. When we put energy into an electron, we are going to excite the electron away from the nucleus. Our energy in this case is going to be the flame from a Bunsen burner. So when we put our splint with a solution into the Bunsen burner, the electrons on the ions that are located now on my splint are going to be excited by the energy coming from the flame of the Bunsen burner, causing them to move away from the nucleus of the atom. And when they come back down, they will release that energy in the form of light that we will pick up with our eye. And remember that the amount of energy that the electron gives off is going to correlate to a different color. So the more energy that the electron absorbs, the more energy is going to be given off when it comes back down to its natural state, that more energy is going to equate to a shorter wavelength in the form of purples or blues. Likewise, if the electron were to absorb a little bit of energy, it's still going to get excited and move away from the nucleus, but it won't move as far. And when it comes back down, it will release that smaller amount of energy that we will see as light to our eye. And so if there's a little energy coming off of that electron coming back down to ground state, 
we are going to see it as red because smaller amounts of energy will equate to longer wavelengths, which will give us our reds and oranges in color. Okay, so let's get into it. So this is the solid NaCl. I soaked a splint in a little beaker of water and then I put this into a little container of solid NaCl, also known as sodium chloride. And this is what it looks like before I put it into my flame. And this is what the flame looks like. So I want you to take note of what color the flame turns. Next, I have sodium chloride, but this time instead of having it in the solid form, I have it in the liquid form. So I had a little container that was filled with a uh, sodium chloride solution, and this has been soaking in it. Let's see what color the flame turns. So that is the liquid sodium chloride. Next I have sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Again, this is a solution. Everything from now on will be a solution and I have been soaking my splint in that solution. Let's see what color the flame turns. That's the sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Next we have lithium nitrate, LiNO3, another solution. Again, that was lithium nitrate, LiNO3. Next up, we have strontium nitrate, SrNO32, another solution. That was strontium nitrate, SrNO32. Next, I have calcium nitrate, CaNO32. This is a solution. Again, that was calcium nitrate, CaNO32. Next, we have copper 2 nitrate, CuNO32. This is another solution. Again, that was copper nitrate, CuNO32. Next up, we have barium nitrate, BaNO32, another solution. That was barium nitrate, BaNO32. Next we have potassium nitrate, KNO3, another solution. And 
remember that was potassium nitrate KNO3. Now I'm going to do the NaNO3, but I'm going to put the cobalt glass up against my camera lens. So let me get that situated. Now I'm going to put the NaNO3, remember this was orange without the glass. Let's see what color it turns. That was the NaNO3 with the cobalt glass. Next, I'm going to do the KNO3, the potassium nitrate, with the cobalt glass. Remember, this was purple by itself. That was the potassium nitrate with the glass. Lastly, I'm going to do the mixture of KNO3 and NaNO3. That's potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate. We are going to do it first without the glass. So that's the mixture of potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate without the glass. And next I'm going to do it with the glass. All right, now that the lab is done, I want to help you kind of interpret what we did in order to answer those 10 questions on your lab sheet effectively and efficiently. So to start, right, we tested two types of NaCl or sodium chloride. We tested the solid version of NaCl when I put the splint into water and then into the salt crystals and put it into the flame. But I also tested the liquid form of NaCl as well. Now, I want you to think, what was the point of doing that, right? It's both, they're both NaCl, it was just in a different state, right? Solid versus liquid. So what was the point of me doing that? The point was for us to see that no matter if it's solid or liquid, we're going to see the exact same color, okay? Because both of these are still made up of the same exact ions and it has the same exact amount of electrons on each atom. So it doesn't matter if we would have done solid or liquid, okay? As long as we have the same ions in each of the compounds, which we do. So then what we did in addition to the NaCl solid and liquid is we threw in NaNO3, which is known as sodium nitrate. Now you might notice something that is similar amongst all three of these compounds. I hope you see it. And you should have also noticed a similarity in the color flame that all three of these compounds produced. If you didn't, go back and watch the lab again. The similarity you see within the compounds is exactly the reason why you saw the similarity in the color of the flame. So in question number three on your lab, it's asking you if the flame test is a test for the metal ion. So did we test for the sodium and the strontium and the barium and the copper, or did we test for the nitrate ion? If we were testing for the nitrate ion, you would think that both of these compounds that had a chlorine ion would have been a different color than the nitrate ion. If that was the case, then we tested for the nitrate ion. And another way to prove your point, every single other solution, because it contained nitrate, should have also been the exact same color 
as the sodium nitrate. If you think we were testing for the metal ion, so the sodium ion, or the strontium, or the lithium, or the barium, then all three of these should have shown the same exact color because they all contain the same metal ion. And then every other compound that we tested, the lithium nitrate, the strontium nitrate, the copper nitrate, should have all shown you varying different colors due to the differing metal ions. Okay, so that's your kind of hint for question number three. Next, I wanna just quickly talk about the purpose of the color filter. We talked about the purpose in the intro video to the lab, but I want you to think about when we actually used it. So when you think about, um, we, we did the sodium nitrate, the NaNO3 with our naked eye, and then we did the NaNO3 with the glass. And I want you to think about the difference between what we saw with our naked eye and what we saw with the glass in front. Then we did the potassium nitrate with the glass, right? So I want you to compare what color was the potassium nitrate, that KNO3, with our naked eye? And then what color was it when we put the glass over the lens? So then when we got to the last part where we took the uh, solution with the sodium nitrate and the potassium nitrate, when you were looking without the glass, with our naked eye, which compound were you actually seeing based on the color of the flame? So you want to compare the color of the flame for that mixture with the color of the flame for each of those solutions separately with our naked eye. So compare um, the color of the mixture without the glass, compare that with the sodium nitrate by itself without the glass, and then compare that with the uh, potassium nitrate without the glass. So which one were you actually seeing? Were you seeing the sodium nitrate? Were you seeing the potassium nitrate? Or were you seeing both? Then we put the glass over the lens for the mixture. So to figure out what solution you were actually seeing, you want to compare your observations for the mixture with the glass to the sodium nitrate by itself with the glass and compare it to the potassium nitrate with the glass. So really, what solution were you seeing when we put that mixture into the flame with the glass over the lens? That should help you with number five, six, seven. Okay, that's the flame test lab.